Hey y'all, this is Porty1119 from Head Frame Hunters. I'm going to do this video a little bit differently. I'm uh, going to do voiceover in post-production. Uh, that way it'll be easier for me to give you a big picture here of the operation. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a uh, mine in the Central Kentucky Mineral District. Specific location and name has been redacted to protect the property. Uh, it's private ownership, restricted access. We're just going to go ahead and call it the uh, Green Million Extension Mine Number 1. If you know what that means, you know what it means. Uh, this was a primary calcite mine. It was mined in the early 1900s to World War I for optical grade calcite. Uh, some fluorite and barite were also produced. Uh, and then reportedly there was copper and uh, zinc ore encountered in sulfide form in some concentration. I don't think it was very significant. Uh, on this on this mine we've got two adits and a shaft. Uh, we were able to access one of the adits during this uh, during the time that we spent on the property and uh, were able to observe the shaft. The uh, shaft we believe connects with a, a lower level about 30 feet below the level that we access in the video. Uh, that level is now flooded we believe it to have been stoked fairly extensively. Uh, you should be looking right now at the blueprint we've got put together. It's a simplified version of what all we observed. I'm going to be trying to do that on videos from here on out to give a better big picture view of what we're looking at because it's pretty easy to get caught up in individual shots and not see the forest for the trees, so to speak. So this is looking down that vertical shaft. It was apparently uh, about 10 feet deeper than we can see right now. Previous owner had attempted to fill it with trash. He was hoping to fill it all the way up to the surface because it's a liability. And it's probably about 10 feet wide, 20 feet long. I've measured it with a laser range finder. This is uh, mm -hmm. back at the portal, looking over the shaft, but and then in coming into the portal. So they did run uh, compressed air into this mine, as well as rail. Uh, so most likely they used a jack leg drill for production and development to drilling. Buffer out the acid from coal and such. So once we got inside, the back in most places was in good condition. Uh, it was about six and a half foot high, right in the entry. Uh, they got a, they had a good contact, so we had a good back. The vein up there is about a foot and a half wide. Uh, it opened up to three feet or wider in places, primarily where it was stoked. Yep, that's a real nice calcite vein right there. In places it's up to three feet wide or wider. Probably a foot and a half there. Yeah, you can see the uh, the drill holes up through there that they put in. Right. You know, when I bought this place, they didn't even tell me about these mines. So this is the first sort of stoked out area we encountered. Uh, it was not particularly high, maybe 12 to 15 feet in height. Uh, there were no, no stoles installed uh, or work platforms. The rail in this mine was very intact, uh, especially where it was still underwater. They used 18 inches. Uh, you can hear that, that reverberate, ver yeah, yeah. reverberation there. Yeah. That's actually a sign you've got really good rock. Uh, if you get if your voice gets muffled, that's a bad sign. Yep. Get out. Yeah. 
So right here we're coming into the, uh, the second stope. This is significantly larger than the first one. It's uh, about opening up to uh, another stope here. Uh, again, we lasered it. We've got a, a forest of stoles installed to, to keep the stope open. Start to hear water up here as we move forward. Uh, there was a, I'm not sure if it was a, a raise driven from that stope or a shaft sunk down or if it was just a natural collapse. I'm inclined to believe that it may have been a collapse uh, given the pile of material I'm standing on, I'm about to be standing on. But there was a, an opening to the surface. With uh, a very large quantity of water cascading down. We found quite a few natural springs and small caves in the area. It's uh, limestone or karst type topography that is very prone to eroding and uh, will carry a substantial amount of water. This right here is a winds. Uh, we believe it goes down about 30 feet and meets up with a level that is connected to that shaft. Uh, that shaft would have been used to hoist ore from that lower level. Uh, again, that, that lower level is obviously flooded. We've been told that uh, beyond this winds, the mine only continues probably 100 feet. Uh, looking up that way, you can see the, the surface. Big. And uh, that alcove of the, the stoke that continues back towards the portal, uh, we've been informed that that does not connect with the previous stoke and that there is, in fact, a dead cow back there that fell in from yep. the surface. Stand somewhere not there. This is uh, looking back out at the portal. And then uh, to the ore dump. So they had a uh, a dedicated ore dump and waste dump. This is what we marked as a collapsed drift or an open cut in the blueprint. It's just a small little thing that probably didn't go back more than about 30 feet. I've been told by the owner that it was previously previously underground, but it looks like the, the back caved and it's now pretty well surface. I'm not sure uh, if any of it was originally developed as surface workings, but it is now. Uh, I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Uh, again, this has been the Green Million Extension number one mine uh, with Head Frame Hunters here in Central Kentucky. Thank you very much for watching, and adios.